Chad Blake has been the engineer, producer, and for the most part, mixer to some of the biggest names in music over the last 30 years. His innovative style and use of unconventional methods means he's been able to stand out from the crowd and create incredible sounding records with an in-your-face quality that immediately grabs your attention. Chad's first introduction to the world of recording was while playing session guitar at Hyder Studios in California at the age of 19. After three months of subsequently knocking on the door for a job, the studio finally relented and took Chad on. Two days later, he was in attendance at a Rolling Stones session as they recorded their album Tattoo You. After three years of learning the ropes, he decided to move on firstly to Mad Dog Studios and eventually Sound Factory under the tutelage of Grammy Award winning producer David Leonard. Here he would work on such acts as Sheena Easton and it's where he really developed his engineering skills. It was at Sound Factory that Chad encountered the talented producer Mitchell Froome. The pair immediately hit it off sharing similar tastes and styles. Not long after, Froome was having trouble with a string of engineers while working on Crowded House's first album and called Chad to help towards the end of the recording process. This proved to be a big success and the pair continued to work together into the 90s. By this stage, Chad was getting a bit tired of the records they were making and how they were making them. The vogue of the time was to create glossy mixes and he felt he wasn't actually that good at it, but more importantly, he didn't really like them. Realising Chad's dissatisfaction, Mitchell said, You know, we're going to do this next record with Los Lobos and we've got to start being happy with what we do. So anything goes. Let's just go back to what we did before when we first started. Let's just do what we do. And they, Los Lobos, were ready for it. They wanted to do something different. This album was Kiko, and it was the first time Chad really got to experiment with his long-held fascination with natural ambience, and primarily the art of binaural recording. Binaural recording is a method of recording sound that uses two omnidirectional microphones, arranged with the intent to create a 3D stereo sound sensation for the listener, so they feel they're actually in the room with the performers or instruments, although true binaural sound is only possible with headphones due to the isolation. Chad had always been interested in environmental sounds. When he was young, he used to record random sounds with a cassette recorder while walking around. This fascination resurfaced while recording the Latin Playboys album, as Chad walked around the block collecting sounds, and for the song Rudy's Party, he put binaural microphones on the roof of the studio and recorded the street sounds that went on at the same time as they were recording overdubs downstairs. At this time, Chad was using two ECM-50 lavalier mics. He actually wore them like you would headphones, and he used his own head as opposed to a dummy head setup that was used in the more expensive purpose-built systems like the Neumann KU100 that carries the nickname Fritz. Another breakthrough and eventual Chad Blake signature technique would arise when recording the Tom Waits album Bone Machine. Recording the drums in a tiny room, Chad tried out his newly acquired vintage Shaw level lock. This compressor not only squashed the drums in a pleasing way, but also added distortion, which formed an ambience without having to add reverb. This led him to experiment with other forms of distortion that he could blend in with his recordings. This included the Tech 21 Sans Amp, which was originally designed as a guitar pedal to emulate an amplifier. Ironically, this is the only instrument he doesn't use it on, preferring to use it on drums, bass, and many other applications. Chad explains, I really like recordings that are in your face, that sound very dry and intimate. I feel as though they're coming towards you. I've only used reverb on maybe two records in the last 10 years. Instead, I prefer to use distortion and compression to create ambience. Blake is an engineer who likes to create sound effects at source, using what he calls mechanical filters, like wooden pipes, didgeridoos, tin cans and boxes. For instance, he'll experiment by putting springs in a tin can and placing that in front of a drum and putting a microphone on it. Chad's unorthodox methods were grabbing the attention of mainstream big acts, and he had huge hits with Sheryl Crow, Crowded House and Pearl Jam, producing their album Binaural, named after his love of this recording technique. By this stage, he was able to invest in a KU100 and was using it as a drum overhead mic in all his sessions. I personally was fascinated by this stuff, but without a spare eight grand, I decided to try and crudely approximate one of these mics using two AKG C414s and a bicycle helmet stuffed with a jumper. I was pleasantly surprised by how smooth it sounded versus my usual method of a stereo pair of cardioids.
When binaural recordings are played back on speakers, they have crosstalk interference between channels, but it still sounds different and this is what he likes. To really hear what binaural can do, it's worth listening to the album From the Caves of the Iron Mountain, released in 1997. This album involves Chad entering a cave and walking around to different instruments. Really quite an incredible sounding record. Chad and Mitchell Froome continued to work with huge artists throughout this time, including Paul McCartney and U2, which kept their profile high in the mainstream, while continued to record ambient music and world music at Peter Gabriel's studio. This led him to mix many of the Black Keys albums, firstly on the album Brothers and quickly after El Camino. The Black Keys were big fans of Chad's technique and wanted him to push them even further with his use of distortion. Another request of theirs was to have a full bottom end on the drums that could match the contemporary mixes of the day. To achieve this, Chad used drum samples from Drumagog, and to add that real low end, he opted for the techno kick drum samples, namely number 5 and 15 if you want to use the same. Around this time, Chad was switching to working in the box. This meant working with a plugin version of Sansamp and a whole host of new distortion plugins that includes the Sound Toys Decapitator, using them to blend in with the original sound. The success of this collaboration led him to mix the Arctic Monkeys album AM, using similar techniques like bolstering the low end with samples and using distortion to create really interesting drum sounds. It's worth noting that it's probably a good idea not to send this sample kick to your drum bus for two reasons. The low end will eat up a lot of your headroom going into the compressor, and if you're adding distortion effects, it could EQ some of the bottom end out. Sending it straight to the master fader will better maintain its effect. Chad's sonic adventures have inspired many engineers, including me, and the binaural recording technique is something I really want to investigate further after hearing his recordings using this method. I have a strange feeling my drums are also going to see a lot more parallel distortion as well. <laughs> 